Hi, it's Dr. Wu, and I want to tell you a story about Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan was known to unite all of Mongolia. He united stuff from all the way from China to Turkey. He had all of that land. He owned all of that. And how did he do it? Although we think of Genghis Khan as a warrior, Genghis Khan was a statesman. He worked with people. He tried to unite Mongolia, because you know, Mongolia had all these fighting tribes and they all fought against each other. They couldn't get it together. So Genghis Khan, being very smart, who he went is he went to a group and they're called the Fearless Warriors. And the reason that they're called the Fearless Warriors, they would go into battle with no fear at all. Somebody hit them, they'd keep coming. No matter what they did, you couldn't stop them. They were like the atomic bomb of today, like the atom bomb. They were incredible. They would work on each other. Here's how they became fearless. Let me tell you what they did. After battle, when they came home, what they would do is they would work on each other. They would work on each other. This is a little stick that I work with. This is a little stick, but what they would use is they would use the radius bone of their enemy. Cut off somebody's arm and they would take that bone and they would get home and they would start working on the body and they would clear themselves. Here's what happens. If I hit you, I just bust you in the nose for no reason. Ah! The next day when I see you, if I go like this, you're gonna already be moving. What happens is that's fear and fear gets stored in our body. It gets stored in every muscle, it gets stored in the bone, it gets stored in our nervous system. If I took a big rock and I threw it in a pond, what would happen is the rock would hit in the pond and ripples would come out, right? So if that's like what's happening in our body, so I throw that ripple or I hit you or something happens to your body mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, and what happens is a ripple of energy goes through your body. If it doesn't bother you, if it's a lesson that you learn, comes in, goes off, you just throw the stress out. But if I throw that stone in the, in the lake and those ripples come out, it's almost like the ripples get flash frozen. Once the ripples are frozen, you get all these lumps and bumps in your body. When you don't learn the lesson, what happens is you clench and then you have lumps and bumps and neck ache and pack ache and you just have an incredible amount of pain in your body and what it mostly is, is stored fear. Let's go back to the story of Genghis Khan. The fearless warriors, when Genghis went in there, he said, I will fight your chieftain and if I win, you join me and if not, you can kill me. So Genghis started fighting and they disconnected, dislocated his wrist then his elbow, then his shoulder, then his neck, then his back and his legs. Genghis was laying there, you know, but he still tried to fight. <laughs> he tried to bite the guys. <laughs> the chieftain laughed because they said, although Genghis couldn't beat them, he had such a heart. He was such a warrior at heart. He wanted this so bad that the, the fearless warriors decided to join Genghis Khan and they united all of Mongolia and became one of the most powerful forces in the entire world. Now, here's how they did it. They'd come home from that battle and they'd work on themselves. Self-massage is the best massage you can do. But they'd work on themselves and they'd work on each other. They'd even work on their horses. They, they had these little curly ponies and they'd work on them and work on them and they'd need them. And what they would do is they would get all of the fear out of the muscle. Once the fear is out of the muscle, you can just go back into battle and somebody goes to swing at you. It doesn't bother you because there's no fear. In today's world, we have so much tension. Financial woes, relationship woes. Uh, where will I get this? What will I do? Things we want. We just have all this trauma going on and we end up all clenched up. I have people come in the office every day, Dr. Wu, I got a back ache, a neck ache, a foot ache, a knee ache. I hear about pain every day. And let me tell you where the pain comes from. It comes from stored emotional tension locked into the body. Now that doesn't mean if you get hit by a car, you're not gonna have pain, 
but it's not so much the pain you get, it's the suffering. It's what you think about all the time. I got hit in this arm five years ago by my ex-husband and wife, and I still have the pain. The it goes all the way into Mongolia, a treatment that the fearless warriors used to use. And I'm going to show you this on Anastasia's feet and on her legs. Now, there's some different ways to do it. You can do it using your knuckle, just the knuckle of your hand like that. You can do it with your fist. You can do it with your thumb. Or you can use one of these sticks. This is just a bamboo stick. It's pointed on one end and it's flat. It's all sanded. It's very smooth. I've got it in this style. I've got it in a little bigger style. And I use this to clear the memory of the muscle and throw out the sort of the wind out of the body. Here's another one. This one's made of bone. And you can actually work and clear the energy that's trapped in the body. Once you free up that energy, it really helps with restless leg syndrome. The best massage that you can possibly do is a massage that you're doing on yourself. If I'm massaging her, it's not like the same as she's sitting up and doing her own type of massage. So I'm going to show you how to clear the muscles on this leg and on this foot. And then once I clear it, I'm going to show you how you can do it on yourself. Okay, so you take the foot like this. Which foot's better, Kim? Doesn't really matter. Okay, I take the foot. And between the feet right here, you can just move these bones like this. And as you move the bones, you can free up all the tension. Sometimes these things get stuck together like this. You wear high heel shoes all the time, everything gets stuck. As you open these up, you free this. Okay, so I'm going to just hold on to one of the joints here, and I'm going to move the other joint. Then I go to the next metatarsal, I move it, next one, I move it, next one, and the next one, and I start to free that up. Now, I'm putting my hand on the bottom of her foot, and I'm just going to stretch. Right here is kidney one. This is the acupuncture point. This is where the kidney meridian starts. So I'm just going to open that up and free up all this energy. And then I'm going to take my knuckle and between the feet, between these little joints in here, I'm just going to go and start to stretch, starting to free all of this up. Now you see she got a little reaction there. I saw her jump, so that must have been a little tender. But Anastasia wears high heels, so and she can dance and walk in them and all those things. I'm just going to free all this up so she'll see when she walks, it's going to be a lot more comfortable. Okay, or I can use my whole hand, taking my knuckles like that and just putting it on the bottom of her feet. And I'm just going to slide down the foot. You okay? Yeah. This works on something called the fascial tissue. So the fascial tissue is like muscles and tendons, and they're like held in a plastic bag. So if there's a trauma, you fall, you twist your ankle, you put it yourself in high heels all the time, what happens is these don't get open up. So as I'm working, I'm starting to open this up, and with restless leg syndrome, I free up all this. Once this is freed up, man, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable. Now, on the leg, there's a bone right here. So if I touch this, there's a big bone right there. Okay. So I'm just going to put my knuckle right next to that. And I'm just going to, like, clean the bone, it's called. So I'm going to go down. As I do this, I'm just starting to clear. Whoa, little reaction, huh? <laughs> just start to free that up. Right. And here's the ankle. I'm going to go around the ankle, around the ankle, 
all those bones. So I'm looking for the bone, and when I find the bone, I take my hand and just start to free this up right along the bone. Then on the other side of the leg, she's a little ticklish, so we get some jumping here. Okay, here's a bone right here. I'm going to just, again, this time I'm going to use my thumb, and I'm just going to go right down the bone. Ooh, I see it's a little bit either ticklish or hurts, but I'm going to start to clear that bone. Okay, now here's one. This one's hard to do on yourself, but I'm going to show you something. Okay, I'm just going to get up on the table, and I'm going to sit on her foot. The reason I'm sitting on her foot so she won't pull it away. I'm going to take my hands, and I'm going to put it right on the calf muscle. See the muscle right here? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go between the calf muscle. I'm just going to slide down. Whoa, good one, huh? And I'm starting to free up all of this in the muscle. Now, if I was going to use one of these sticks, okay, this, if you're going to do it on yourself, I suggest doing it on yourself instead of doing it on a friend because you have to practice not to hurt the person. Okay, so here's the knee, and I'm just going to go around the knee. So here's the bone. I'm following the bone. I'm putting my thumb next to it, and you always have to ask the person if you're killing them. Am I hurting you? No. No, she's more ticklish. And here's the kneecap right here. I'm going to go just around the kneecap. Good. And then I'm going to take the broad end of the stick, and I'm just going to go... So what I'm doing is I'm starting to free up the fascial tissue. I'm starting to release that plastic bag. So here's my muscle, and it would be like the plastic bag is holding the muscle together. If there's some tension, if you have mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, psychological, and you clench, if you get in an automobile accident, you clench. And when you clench, after a month or two, all the tension's gone. But that plastic bag, that fascial tissue, still has the memory of what went on. So it's interesting. The calves have to do with moving forward in life. The feet has to do with your projects, what projects you have. So if the person sprains their ankle, it means there's a, some type of incongruency between their projects and how they're moving forward. So as we clear this, I usually ask the patient, hey, what projects are you working on? And then I start to clear up what's locked in the foot with the feet and all the projects. And then we look at, are you moving forward? What's holding you back? And as we clear those, and then you get the person to go home and journal and write about their projects, write about what's holding them up, what they need to move forward. And as they do that, They'll free up the psychological, and at the same time, you start to free up the foot. Okay, I'll show you another one. Here is, this one is the same thing, but this is plastic or bone, I think it is. And I can get more precise, because here's the little tip. So if I'm going to work the knee, there's an acupuncture point right there. I can just put it on there and hold to the count of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and release. I go to the other point. Now, how are you going to find it? You'll look for a little hole. You feel a little hole. Don't squish it. Just go in there and hold it. You okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that I freed that up, now again, this is very smooth, so I'm going to free the inside of the leg. So I'm starting to get the energy flowing. Here's what happens. Let's say you have a lot of energy moving through your body, and it's not especially good. It's just, you know, you got all these things going on. The first thing that I always free up are the hands and the feet. Why? Because those are the extremities where I want, I need something to move the energy out. I need to open the faucets. So when I'm working with the hands and the feet, and the legs, I'm opening all this up so I can get things moving. And then when I go to the torso, everything frees up. Okay, let's go back 
and we'll use this foot this time. All right, I'm just going to jump up on the table here. This is something that's really helpful. Now you can do it yourself by moving your foot around like this, but it's really helpful if you can work with somebody. They grab a hold of your ankle and the other hand grabs your foot and you're going to go around the foot. She's pretty flexible. So I'm going around and then reversing around. Getting all that, then I'm going to twist it toward me. I'm going to twist it away from me. I'm going to push it up toward the head. And then I'm going to push it forward. Then, again, around in circles one way, around in circles the other way. So I'm starting to get all the tension out of the ankle here. So then, when I go to work with my knuckles and clear the bone, Again, I'm going to go, so the foot or the ankle's already open. So if I'm squeezing this out, it's going to shoot right out of her toes. Sometimes we have problems with the toes. So um, I'll do this. On the sides of the toes, I just squeeze and shake. Squeeze and shake. Squeeze and shake. I go to the next toe. Grab it, squeeze and shake. And as you do that, you free up all the tension. Woo, it's a good one, huh? I got a little ticklish patient here. <laughs> okay, now that I did that, I'm gonna grab the toe and I'm just gonna pull. You might hear a crack and pull. Now when you're pulling, make sure you pull it straight out. So I've got it pinching it like that. So I got this finger bent. This one comes down on top. I grab the toe and just pop, pop, pop. And what that does, that frees up the toes. Now can you come to the bottom so you can see the bottom of the foot? On the bottom of the foot, the same thing. So my finger's a little big, so I'll take my little pointed thing, and then right, I'll push there's a point, and one here, and one here. Then I go down the foot. Push, push, push. And you only have to do it for a second or two. And I do that with every toe. There's three points. And then you move down, one, two, three, and the last one, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. You gotta be delicate, but you wanna apply enough pressure that they know that you're freeing up the 